Welcome to Rich Thoughts TV. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my super fine wife, Beth. Hallelujah. Next month, we've been married for 52 years. That would be correct. I'm excited. Today, we're going to talk about seven keys to immediate increase. Mm. Now, I want to give you a warning right now. I want to give you a warning. All in all fairness, I have to do this. I've got to warn you. The principles that we're going to teach in this teaching are hazardous to the enemy and potentially devastating to his plans for your finances and your life. That's right. So know that. <laughs> I love it. We like taking him to the woodshed. Yeah, we, we do, baby. Black That's eye. Right. That's right. There are seven keys to immediate increase that will set you, well, that will set the captives of mediocrity free. It will raise those seemingly condemned to a financial abyss, to a higher understanding of what it takes to experience continuous increase. Remove any and all hindrances. Prepare yourself to be, well, to a real and lasting increase in your life. Amen. Here are the seven keys for each of us to study and activate. Hallelujah. Now, first, expect previously unknown opportunities, even in the midst of adversity. You know, the best way to experience previously unknown opportunities is to expect them. Adversity is going to come to everybody, but in there, in that adversity is an opportunity to overcome. And that's what God's wanting to show you. You know, we've discovered that when we expect these adversities to show us opportunities and open doors that have never been opened before, regardless of circumstances, then they tend to happen. That's it. You know, there are times in life when we, our reaction really to adversity is the one that determines the opportunities we're going to receive. Jacob worked for his father-in-law, Laban, who was crooked and conniving. You know somebody crooked and conniving? It's interesting that the three letters in conniving is first three are con. <laughs> and even in the midst of a conniving work environment, Jacob didn't waver in his trust for God. He expected God to take care of him. And guess what? He did. Jacob continued to do the right thing and be honorable. That is the first thing. Even if the boss or the relative didn't act the same. You know, Jacob stayed strong in his faith and obedient to what the Lord directed. If we want unknown opportunities to come our way, we must stay faithful, faithful, even in seemingly unbearable circumstances. Yes. Jacob persevered and God honored him with favor and guess what? With wealth. Genesis 31. Six through nine. There Take you go. Take time to read it. It'll bless you. It is. It's, there's a lot to it. Because of faithfulness, though, God took the wealth of Laban and then presented Jacob with the opportunity of great wealth. In Genesis 33.10, Message Bible, it reveals Jacob's godly attitude. Don't forget to read this. It's a great study. And his subsequent reward, which he, when he was able to confront his brother Esau, Jacob said, please, if you can find it in your heart to welcome me, accept these gifts. And when I saw your face, it was as if the face of God smiling on me. Accept the gifts I have brought to you. God has been good to me, and I have more than again. enough. God has been good to me. Oh, now, remember what Jacob came out of, conniving atmosphere. But God turned it around for him in the end, and he said, God has been good to me. I have more than enough. Let me tell you. God's been good to you. That's right. But as my mama would say, you ain't seen nothing yet. There you go. The best is yet to come. You know, regardless of the circumstances at the moment, don't get all caught up in those. We, if we remain faithful, even in the midst of adversity, and you're going to face adversity at times, God will bring opportunity your way. But if you're all in the mully grubs, you're not going to see it when it comes into view. However, we need to be expectant that every of the opportunities that are coming our way, like I said, or we won't see them, right, honey? That's it. Second, tap into previously <laughs> untapped potential. Mm. Now, truthfully, I wasn't the best student in high school or college. Really? Hard to believe, I know. If, we, if you went to college, you may have had a similar experience to mine. 
I had a history professor with whom I had a great relationship. He explained to me the honors associated with a college graduate. I'll always remember, he said, some people graduate cum sum cum law, some graduate magna cum law or cum law, but Harold, you're going to graduate thanks to the law. <laughs> thanks to the law, huh? That's what he said. We both laughed, but he spoke truth. For me, college career was a necessary step on the way to my political destiny. However, all of that was BJ before Jesus. Before Jesus. For years, I saw myself as an average person. Then when I got into the Word of God, He began to bring out abilities and attitudes in me which began to maximize my potential. You know, Gideon never saw his potential until an angel That's right. told him he was a mighty man of valor. He God saw around. potential. <laughs> he was looking around going, who are you talking to? <laughs> Is that what's happened to you sometimes? Yeah. I you need that. to read this story in Judges good. 6. But see, God saw potential Amen. in Gideon that he didn't even know existed. That's right. As he had a poor self-image, to say the least. As Gideon became thankful to God's direction, he was able to tap into potential that he never knew was with him until God showed up. That's right. And it's the same with all of us. God's ready to show up for you too. Amen. Don't you doubt it. Believe it. You know, for 40 years he'd been on the backside of the desert when God told Moses he'd be the deliverer of his people. He questioned his own potential for leadership because he became disheartened over the opportunities of his past, which seemed to him lost forever. Hallelujah. But you know, but God, but God. But God. When it comes time for your potential, see success in leadership. Don't look at your abilities, but rather what God can do through you. Amen. And wants to do through you as a yield. As a yield. Mm -hmm. When you follow God's direction, you're able to tap into potential you never knew that you had like it. Or claim a potential for success that you may have thought died in the desert of your dream, like Moses. God sees greater potential in you. God sees greater potential in you than you see in yourself. And that is so true. And, you know, the Bible is full of stories that show that very thing. So don't ever get disheartened on what's happening in your life. Third, develop a reputation as a problem solver. Your ability to solve problems will open great doors for you and great opportunities. Daniel is a great example of that very thing by the problem solving reputation that he earned himself in a very foreign land where he was basically a slave. You know, his reputation preceded him and put him in a position of promotion and eventually wealth. Daniel 2, 46 and 47 in the Message Bible says this, when Daniel finished, King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face in awe before Daniel. He ordered the offerings of sacrifice and burnt offerings of incense in Daniel's honor. He said to Daniel, your God is beyond question the God of all gods, the master of all kings, and he solves all mysteries. I know because you solved this mystery. Look, Daniel's ability to solve problems prompted the king to offer him three rewards. But before I even get into them, understand this. It was God's, it was Daniel's dedication to God to allow God to use him to solve these problems. First, Daniel could visit the king's tailor and be fitted in his own Armani suits. We'll just put it that way. Anyway, number two, Daniel was offered a serious you know, serious wealth of that day, the Blame. gold and the, the silver and all of the stuff that was worn by the king himself. And third, he was given an incredible position of honor far over and above all of the other 
Well, I say soothsayers, but all of the other, you know, supposedly wise men, wise men of the of Babylon. So according to the words of First Timothy 5, 17 and 18, this also in the Message Bible, it says, give a bonus to the leaders who do a good job, especially the ones who work hard at preaching and teaching. Scriptures tells us don't muzzle a working ox and a worker deserves his pay. The Lord is the one who brings us recognition. You know, that's called in all going the extra mile. When you go the extra mile, it may be a little lonely, but it'll pay off. God rewards those who do it. Initiatives doing the right thing without being told to do it. Hallelujah. Solving problems. That's so true. Way too many workers just want enough to get by, and that's what they get. Just enough to draw their paycheck, get a promotion as well, never seems to manifest. You've got to be proactive. You've got to see a problem in your workplace, offer solutions. Don't wait for your boss or the opinions of others, you know, or an assistant. The point of it, too, is that you may not even get the credit for it. But I can tell you this one. God keeps the books. I promise you, God keeps the books. You you may not be considered, you know, of the value of the employee, but God is the one who's paying attention. And I can promise you it will work out for you in the end. Just keep solving problems and just keep improving your performance. In Romans 12, 6 through 8, Romans 12, 6 through 8, Message Bible. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you're giving encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with a disadvantage, don't let yourself become get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. First, the problem closest to you, find it and solve it. And one That's more good. thing, become a problem solver and you'll be able to bless your friends. That's what Daniel did. It says, then the king promoted Daniel to a high position in the kingdom, lavished him with gifts. We talked about that. Made him governor over the entire province of Babylon and the chief of all of the Babylonian wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as administrative posts throughout Babylon while Daniel governed from the royal headquarters. That's in Daniel 2, 48 and 49. Hallelujah. Not only was he promoted, but... So were his friends. Mm. Fourth, attitude adjustment. If you want to increase your income, if you want things to be different in your life, the number one thing, number one thing you need to change, not your job, not your circumstances, not your environment. Hear this. Not relationships or income. The number one thing you need to change is your attitude. Now, your attitude can either be good or bad. That's why I want to be very specific. Your attitude is determined by the collection of the dominant thoughts in your mind. So in determining the proper attitude for change, we must look at Philippians 2.5, 2.5, New Living Translation. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. That says it all. Before you ever do anything you want to think, like he would think. The great news is that you can know with absolute certainty what Jesus says. All that's required to read your Bible, do what it says. That's right. No, Napoleon Hill, the author, he can grow rich as we missed, mentioned earlier. He said, what the mind of man can achieve and believe, can, what the mind of man can conceive and believe, you can't achieve. That's right. We said that last week. However, if you have a negative attitude or a bad attitude, no matter what you can see, it's not going to happen. Mm. not going to happen. But you only change. When you start changing, what's your thinking? Changing the thinking on the inside, it starts manifesting on the outside. That's right. Mm -mm. Seven Efficient. words. Yeah. Read your Bible, do what it says. If you're having trouble in your marriage, 
You got to get rid of attitudes about your spouse before you can embrace a new mindset. Mm-hmm. If you're having trouble with your children, you must get rid of the old attitudes about them before you can embrace a new mindset. If you're having trouble with your boss or job, you must get rid of your attitudes about him or her before you can embrace a new mindset. If you're having trouble with your boss or on your job, you got to get rid of those attitudes. Mm-mm. I'm saying it again. You got to get rid of those attitudes. You must change. Renovate your thinking so that you can replace the old with the new. Romans 12, 2, King James. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you renovate a house, you take a lot of the old, unsafe, unsafe, ultra wearing out, and you put it in you. That's right. You take out the old floor, put it in the new. You're replacing what isn't wanted with what is. And what isn't working with what will work best. That is so true. Yeah. That's a good word, honey. That's okay. such a good word. Fifth, elevate your performance. When our youngest son was about nine or 10 years old, it's so funny, we gave him an extensive chore list on his little Saturday. And he looked up and he goes, What am I, a slave in Egypt? After laughing, after laughing a little bit, he set about to do what it is that he was called to do. The point of it is, is sometimes you might feel like a slave in the workplace, overworked, underpaid. Have you ever had an attitude that affected your performance? You don't like your boss much. Your supervisor is really tough on you and not anybody else. You know, do you dread going to work in the morning? Believe me, you're just watching the time clock to see if it can tick away and you can get out of there. If you answered yes to any of those, we recommend that you read and maybe reread and reread, read, read, read. Colossians 3, 22 through 24, and let it get down deep inside of you because you'll need to change before your outside position is going to change. It says, you slaves must always obey your earthly masters. Think of this in the Bible. Not only trying to please them but they, when they are watching, but all the time, obey them willingly because of your love for the Lord and because you want to please him. Work hard and cheerfully at all you do, just as though you were working for the Lord and not merely for your masters. Remembering that it is the Lord Christ who is going to pay you, think on these things, giving you your full portion of all he owns. He is the one who you are really working for. You know, number one, you're not working as a slave who gets no money. You're working for somebody. But it says even the slaves needed to obey their earthly masters. Why? Because God was the only one who could get them out of that situation. Mm. The point being, number two, not only trying to please them when they're watching you, but when they're not watching you. That's it. Because God is watching you. And we need to, when we're hired to do a job, we need to be doing that job, whether the boss is watching over us or not, Absolutely. whether there's a camera on you or not. Number three, obey them willingly because of your love for the Lord. I'm telling you, it'll make all the difference. I went through this. All the difference in the world when you start just doing it because God is with you and he is helping you. You want to please God with what it is that you do. I could go on and teach a whole sermon on that. Number four, work hard and cheerfully. Write a book. Yeah, I might one day. Working cheerfully, making yourself happy. If you're going to do it, you might as well be happy and be happy in the Lord because he's the one that you're working for. And just understand this, when you can be joyful on the job, despite the the authority over you, no matter whether it's the owner or the the boss or the just a supervisor, the point is you will be happier and you will do much better. Number five, remembering that it is the Lord God who is going to pay you Think about that promotion. Read Psalm 75. Promotion only comes from God. You're going to get more than a paycheck. You're going to get paid by the Lord. 
based on your performance, or he's going to move you up and out, or he might move your supervisor up and out. Point being six, giving your full portion of all he owns. It's not what the owner is giving you. It's what the Lord is giving you. And that is better than anything you can get. And number seven, he is the one you're really working for. And that's the key to increasing your income, no matter where your current job is uh, or whether you're being promoted to another position. Always remember who it is that you're working for. And you will never have to worry about the quality of your performance because your mindset will be in the right place. Wow. Number six, do something you've never done. That's it. If you want to increase your income, then you need to do something you've never done. Is there something you need to learn to be more effective and not, not have just a job, but to be effective the job in every area of your life? If you've been, well, if what you've been doing is not working, then you need to do something else. Albert Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. He also said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. That's it. Hallelujah. Here's some three things that you got to do to overcome adversity. One, start praising the Lord. Amen. Psalm 22, 3. Thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Hallelujah. If you're not convinced, is God ready to sit down with you? Then you need to look at the Hebrew word, the meaning of three words in this passage. Hallelujah. Thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of the people. First word is inhabitants. It's the Hebrew word H thirty four twenty seven. According to Strong's Concordance, it means to dwell, remain, sit, abide. Second word is praises, and uh, that's the Hebrew word H eighty four sixteen. And according to Strong's Concordance, it means praise, song, or adoration, thanksgiving, paid to God. Mm-hmm. Finally, the word is. The Hebrew word is H3478. Strong concordance, it means God prevails. The name of the descendants and the nation of the descendants of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Second, you need to learn to think beyond your imagination. In fact, you need to go to heraldary.com and do a search up at the top for imagination. We've got some incredible, incredible teaching about imagination. You need to check it out because when you start thinking right, then the Holy Spirit will prime your motivation. Amen. See beyond what's currently in your vision. In your view. So the way you gain more understanding and insight is through using your imagination. Read Ephesians 1.18. Ephesians 1.18. Hallelujah. Mm-mm. How do you see something in the future? It's true imagination. And that imagination can be used for good or for evil, depending on the voice that you're listening to. Organize for success. One of the most successful characteristics of millionaires is they write down their goals, keep it in their head, just in good enough. What would you think of a business that didn't have written records? If you expect to work for someone else, you should do no less than that for yourself. You're a business manager for God. He has made you a steward of everything that you're involved in on planet Earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. One final thought. Go to Harold Harry and search seven keys to making godly decisions. You'll be glad you did. Amen. That's good. Seventh sow seeds for a perpetual harvest. Even though many parts of the nation have been battered by cold and hazardous, you know, um, weather really this year, the good news is that we've seen, you know, you'll see robins in your yard even when the spring comes around. Why? Because that is seed time and harvest and winter and summer, and they will not cease as long as the 
the earth is remains, as it says in Genesis. But there are, let me say, four steps to a backyard gardener, which parallel steps for the person desiring to plant seeds for increase in their lives. Number one, we remove the debris, you know, out of our garden. We dig up the old stuff by turning over the dirt. We get ready for new seed. Yes. As believers, we have to take and empty out some of the old thinking yes. that we had that's keeping us back on believing our harvest isn't going to come or it'll never manifest and understand that this is something that is going to clear the way for us to be able to see God helping us. Number two, then we have to plant our seeds. It'd be foolish for the gardener to clean out his garden and never plant a pack of seeds in it. You know, a gardener, gardener doesn't just plant seeds. So he, he plants them so he can get a harvest. So we need to allow the Holy Spirit to direct us on where we're planting seeds. It needs to be at the right place at the right time. And he will direct us in what to do if we're listening to his voice. Yes. Number three, fertilize that soil. And the natural fertilization makes the vegetables grow, right? In the spirit realm, enriching you is going to make all of it's going to make those seeds flourish because we are feeding our spirits. Number four, pull the weeds as they show up, because that's just the smart way to do it. And number five, soak in the word of God. You can't go anywhere without soaking in the water of the washing of the water of the word on us. You know, I like, I'm a kind of an amateur gardener, but I know these principles and you've seen them happen in your own life, whether you're a gardener or not. That's the way it works. God made seed time and harvest, and that's the way he shows us to live our spiritual lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was good, baby. Yes, it is. And uh, there's a little more to this teaching. If you go to heraldherring.com, you'll be able to read it. Get our Rich Thoughts email. comes yep. out on Wednesday. And make sure you listen to WHF yes. TV. Watch it. Hallelujah. Till next time. God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts from the word of God. What she said.